Welcome to this video on reactions of acids. We're going to look at how acids react uh, and we're going to look at that specifically through the vehicle of ionic equations, which turn out to be a really powerful tool for understanding the reactions of acids. So let's begin uh, with a, the simplest reaction of an acid, which is the reaction of an acid with a metal. Um, and I'm going to use the example of zinc and sulfuric acid reacting. Um, and the ionic equation method is always to begin with a full balance symbol equation and we must include state symbols. So important that we have the state symbols. So this is where I've started. Now I'll put the steps down here. If you're confident you can pause the video and try and see if you can derive the ionic equation yourself. Otherwise let's do this with an, as an example. So the second stage is to rewrite the equation and we're going to split substances which exist as separate ions. An ionic equation is just trying to represent reality a bit more faithfully than at present. And the way we're going to do that is anything which is ionic and aqueous gets split. But we're also going to see also we're going to split acids. Because acids, although they're not ionic, so sulfuric acid here is not ionic, um, in aqueous solution, acids dissociate into H plus and SO42 minus ions in this case. So once we do the splitting, we're going to get something like this. Sulfuric acid has become sulfate ions and H plus ions because it dissociates. Zinc, on the other hand, that we've got here, um, actually doesn't change at all. So zinc has just become zinc solid because zinc as a metal is a solid. It doesn't exist as ions, so we just write it as zinc solid. Now zinc sulfate is aqueous. It's ionically bonded. It's a metal and non-metals. So that one is again going to be split this time into Zn2 plus and SO42 minus. And finally hydrogen gas just becomes hydrogen gas because there's no ions here. So that is rewriting the equation and splitting the substances. The next stage is we want to try and cancel any ions uh, that are what we call spectator ions. So anything that is the same on both sides needs to be cancelled. So H plus, there's no H plus, it's H2 is different. SO42 minus is the same as an SO42 minus over here. So that is going to be cancelled because essentially this hasn't done anything. It's just watching the match taking place. It's a spectator. Zn hasn't got a charge here. Here it's 2 plus an aqueous, so it must be different. And the hydrogen we've dealt with. So when we've done that, we should get a final ionic equation that looks like this. Let's go on to the next one. Sodium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. Um, again, this is the full balanced equation. Pause the video now and see if you can do the ionic equation using these steps. Okay, let's see how you got on. So rewriting the equation, we've got sodium carbonate, that's aqueous. So that's going to become Na plus and CO3 2 minus. Um, HCl here in red. Now notice here, sorry, two things, just go back to sodium carbonate. You see I've got, in this case, I've got two uh, Na here, that's not an Na2 2, 2 plus ion, that's two Na plus ions. That's important. And similarly, when we come to HCl, we've got a 2 here as a balancing number. So when that splits, each one of these HCls gives you an H plus and a Cl minus, but because there was a 2, I need a 2 here and a 2 there. Similar, when we get over here to 2 NaCl. I need two Na pluses and two Cl minuses. CO2 gas is just CO2 gas because there's no ions there. And this is an important one, H2O, although H2O can form ions, this one here doesn't ionize very much. So H2O doesn't turn much into H plus and OH minus. Now you might remember from electrolysis that it does a little bit, but we don't ionize it in this case. It's mostly a covalently bonded molecule, and so we leave it as just an H2O. So then we've got to find our spectator ions. In this case, uh, we've got Cl minus, it stayed the same from here and here, and we've got Na plus that is identical to Na pluses, 
and 2Na+. Plus. So when we finish our equation, we've got 2H plus CO3 2 minus CO2 and H2O. On to our third example. This is sodium hydroxide reacting with nitric acid, an example of a metal hydroxide reacting with an acid. Again, pause the video. Can you write the ionic equation? Here it is. So we're going to split here. Our acid becomes H plus and NO3 minus. Our alkali, again, it's ionic, metal, non-metals, aqueous. It's split. Sodium nitrate, again, is a soluble salt. It consists of an Na plus ion. Oh, we made a mistake here. Better change that to NO3 minus. It's incorrect. And H2O, again, doesn't split. So when we finally finish up, we find that we need to do some cancelling. The NO3 minus from this side cancels with the NO3 minus over here. And the Na plus there cancels with the Na plus there. And we just end up with H plus and OH minus, making H2O. Here is the fourth example. This is an acid and a metal oxide. Pause the video and try and see if you can write the ionic equation. Okay, this one we need to be really, really careful of. So I'm just going to take it carefully and see if we can get this right. So here is what we end up with next. So sulfuric acid has split into two H pluses and SO42 minus. No surprises there. Here, I think, is where we find the surprise. MgO, solid, is still MgO, solid. The reason here is that we've got a solid lattice implies that the ions are still together. They have not dissociated. And therefore, when it comes to the ionic equation, we don't split them because it's ionic and aqueous. But here we've got an ionic solid, so it doesn't split. MgSO4 is aqueous, so that splits water as before. So we come to our spectators. We haven't got any H pluses. We've just got SO42 minus on this side and SO42 minus on this side. We can't cancel the magnesiums because we've got MgO locked up as a solid over here. Mg2 plus is aqueous over here. And so we're going to get this ionic equation. So final slide, uh, we're just going to look at trying to compare these acid reactions. Um, so I've shown you all possible uh, acid reactions here. Uh, metal, metal hydroxide, metal oxide and metal carbonate. And in addition, hydroxides and carbonates can sometimes come in aqueous form. So, for example, sodium carbonate uh, is aqueous, potassium carbonate, ammonium carbonate. But most carbonates are insoluble. And similarly with hydroxides, group one hydroxides, ammonium hydroxide, aqueous. Most metal hydroxides are solids. Metal oxides tend to basically be solids. Uh, the exceptional cases being things like sodium oxide, but that actually forms sodium hydroxide in water anyway. So as soon as you react it with the acid, it's basically more like this metal hydroxide aqueous case. So what I want you to see here is that again, with the solid hydroxide, we've got the solid staying over here. We haven't split that up. And similar with something like calcium carbonate, we're not going to split that up into ions like we did with the sodium carbonate example. The one that's not on here is the metal hydrogen carbonate. So that's very, very similar to this, uh, but just with an HCO3 minus ion instead. So what have we got here in terms of similarities? Well, the first thing I want to know in terms of the similarities is that acid reacts as H+. All of these reactions, we've got the acid in red supplying H plus ions. This is the Arrhenius definition of an acid. An acid in water produces H plus ions, and that's what's reacting. Um, now, notice here that the counter ion from the acid, so the counter ion from acid, so I'm talking there about things like Cl minus. SO42 minus, NO3 minus is a spectator. 
And that's why all acids react in roughly the same way. If you add sulfuric acid to zinc or hydrochloric acid to zinc, you still get effervescence, you still get hydrogen gas produced because it's nothing to do with the sulfate. The only thing that will affect is the salt that finally forms if you get rid of all the acid and the metal and evaporate all the water. So that's that case. So these are the two really big similarities with these reactions. Okay, now there's one of these reactions which is the odd one out. Um, and it might be that you can think of a number of possibilities uh, for this. Um, but the one that really stands out is the case with the metal. So this one here is the really special case, acid and metal. Now, why is that? And there are basically three reasons. So the first reason here is that we've got no H2O formed. We've got no H2O. All the others form this liquid water here, not the acid and metal. That forms hydrogen. Um, and the reason for that is because there is no um, molecule here to actually bond with the H+. In all these cases, H+, plus bonds to OH-, minus, H+, plus bonds to OH-, minus, H+, plus bonds to oxide, O2-, minus, H+, plus bonds to the oxide from the carbonate ion in all these cases. So no H2O formed uh, because there is no base for the H plus ion to bond with. It's an odd case. In fact, the H plus ions essentially end up being bonded to each other at the end. So this reaction here is actually a redox reaction. Or rather, I'll put the first, second point, it's not neutralization. All the others involve an acid bonding with a base, or H plus bonding with a base. So this is not neutralization. It's not an acid base reaction. In fact, it is redox. And I'll show you that by some oxidation numbers. If we come over here to the hydrogen. We've got oxidation numbers of plus one, plus one. If we come over here, we find oxidation numbers of zero. So hydrogen here has been reduced. We can write that in a half equation over here. So we've got 2H plus becoming H2. And the way they've done that is by gaining two electrons. That is reduction. And we've also got oxidation occurring. In this case, the zinc starts off life um, as zero oxidation state. Here, zinc starts off life as zero and it becomes in the end plus two. So zinc has been oxidized. And if we write the equation out here, we've got Zn going to Zn2 plus at the loss of two electrons. So that's what ionic equations have taught us about the reactions of acids.